school, so that was really neat. Um, another experience that I wanted to share is I had a, I get emotional just so many years ago this happened and it was so traumatic that even now talking about it is difficult. But I really wanted to honor his memory by talking about it today. Um, so I had a really good friend named Richard Urea, and we went to elementary together. So I knew him through elementary. We were really, really close friends. And then during junior high, I went to a different junior high than everyone else. And we still kind of kept in touch a little bit. So back in high school, we became close again. And we lived near each other, so we take the same bus home and um, walk together. And when my sophomore year in high school, my best friend at the time, Melissa Barron, had a birthday. And her grandma had rented a limo. So after school went out, we went to the front of the school, and there was a limo. And we rode on the limo. And we went through the neighborhood, and we picked up Richard. He, I think he was just walking home, and we picked him up. So he got in the limo with us, and we went to Taco Bell, got some food, and drove around. So this is a picture of us on that day. So I had, this is in February, and I wanted to dye my hair red for Valentine's Day, and so it kind of, that's what it ended up being, so. <laughs> um, but this is a picture of us on that day in the beginning of February. And then a month later, so Richard was a huge jokester, always like good nature, telling jokes, the funny guy. And we were at, I was at home. <laughs> I was sleeping at home. And I got a phone call, uh, it was a month later in March, that um, he was shot at a party. That it was a drive-by. He was in the middle of telling a joke. And um, in the middle of him telling this joke, the, um, the drive-by happened and he was shot. And I remember, um, the phone ringing in the middle of the night, which is always never a good thing. And he, uh, we were told by a good friend of ours that he was shot and in the hospital. So my parents that came into my room woke me up and told me, and, you know, it was emotional. It was so, my dad took me to the hospital. There, he was still in surgery. We didn't know what was happening. And so we were there for a while and then we left. And then this it was like two or three in the morning. It was, you know, we got another call that he had died, and so my dad and I went to his house, and his family was there, and um, friends were there, and so we were just there crying and um, trying to process what happened. So this was on a Saturday. So on Monday, we go back to school, and I remember just walking through the gates, the, the breezeway, and it was so hard knowing that he was never going to walk through that and then my first period I had him he was in my first period class and he sat right behind me and Mr. White was my teacher at the time as our English class and he just didn't have any words to say like you know we were really all sad and just heartbroken over what happened and um like I said, all these years later, every time I think about it or I talk about it, I always cry because it was just a, such a traumatic event. And he was, you know, just full of light and for that to happen. And it wasn't even him that was targeted. He was just at a, happened to be at a party and he just was the unlucky one to have gotten shot. And, but, I just wanted to share his story because he was um, killed so young and his death just had this huge impact because like I said, I would see him every day at school and even it took years up until maybe like years ago where I could drive by his house and not cry, which is every time I would visit my family because he just lived right around the corner from me. But. Um, when time had, it was about a few weeks later after he had passed and the seat next to me was still empty and we got a new guy, his name was Jeff Steele and the teacher, it was the only available seat and he assigned him to the seat that Richard was at 
And I remember looking back and giving him a dirty look, because like, how dare he come and sit in Richard's seat? Um, but ended up, um, it was like a blessing because Jeff was so funny and he was like similar to Richard and he really, um, I don't think he even, I shared with him a little bit when we graduated that, you know, just him being there really helped me get through that difficult time. Just, I guess, him being himself and he was like similar to Richard, he was like funny and telling jokes and stuff. Um, but that was a, a really hard time in high school to go through, but it was something that a lot of us were going through because he had many friends and the staff was, I remember, very gracious about everything going on. And um, so yeah, I just wanted to share some time um, talking about him too. <laughs>